What up, Wizards? It's Dev from the place we like it, a magic. You're joining us on Technical Difficulties Week or Month or whatever it is at this point. Laptop took a coffee bath. Not my fault. I didn't do it. I totally did do that. And it's all my fault, as a matter of fact. Feel like a giant dingus. Massive accident. But we're letting her dry out for a couple of days, keeping our fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Don't have high hopes, but I do have high hopes. We'll be able to return to regular videos really, really soon here after I get everything sorted out. Probably just means going and finding a credit card that has a high enough limit to buy a laptop. That's being a content creator. You know what I'm talking about, but you don't care. You don't care. You don't care about that at all. You're you're here for the spice. You know what I mean? You just want to see the most underrated, sleeperiest cards in Modern Horizons 3. Well, if I, I, I got news for you. That is the video you clicked on. That was the title of the video you clicked on, so it shouldn't actually be news to you. That's basically the entire intro right there. Look, there's really been a lot of talk about this set. Every Literally everyone on the internet and people... Your aunt is on Facebook like, oh, new magic set looks pretty good. Don't even play magic. But literally everyone in the world is talking about the stinking set right now. So it's kind of tough to find sleepers. But I think we were able at the end of the day to pull off 10 plus an honorable mention. So let's go ahead and get in there. I don't want to waste any more of your time. You're busy. I got a lot of neck tension and a lack of a pension. But one good thing I do have is an honorable mention. It's Dog Umber this time around. Two mana, one and a white for an aura with flash and a chance of creature. If you put it on one of your opponents, guys, it's just a pacifism with flash, which is pretty sweet. But if you put it on one of your dudes, it has Umber armor as a reminder, because it has a reminder text. That's convenient. If the enchanted creature would be destroyed, you just remove all the damage from it, and instead you get rid of the aura. So this can either be a protection spell for one of your dudes at instant speed. That's pretty good. Or it can be an instant speed removal spell. That also procs all of your like things that care about enchantments coming into play or whatever. So And it does that on both sides, you know, whether you're protecting a guy or not. It's also um, amazing flavor. <laughs> so there's that. I'm going to make that guy a dog. And for some reason, dogs can't attack or block. I'm not really sure about the flavor. Now that I think about it, but I will say, I just really overall like the design of this card. It's not every day you fully see a flashifism, you know what I mean? But it's also not every day that you see a pacifism with flash that it's also a protection spell. Just this spell kind of does so much. And I think that sort of enchantment oriented decks might really like a card like this. So, haven't really heard anybody say anything about it, and that is a massive oddity <laughs> for cards in this set where like all the stones are definitely unturned. So. I'm really surprised that I haven't heard anybody bring this card up. I just I really like it. It's a good boy, is all I'm trying to say. But next, we'll move on to the actual list here. Number 10 is Envoy of the Ancestors. Originally, this was like a random Eldrazi or something. But I, I realized that I already had random Eldrazi much farther up the list. So I didn't really need other Eldrazi. A little bit of foreshadowing. Breadcrumbs. That's how you make a video right there. What are they? We'll see later. Envoy of the Ancestors is what we're focused on now at number 10. This is three mana, two and a white for a two through human cleric with outlast for a white mana. I mean, you can pay a white and tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on it at sorcery speed. Modified dude, you control have lifelink. So equipments, equipments, auras, any counters whatsoever. These are all mods. So... This is actually kind of a take on like Abzan Falconer, and there was another one that gave a different keyword ability, but Falconer was way back in like Khan's block, and it gave your modified creatures flying. And that's actually a really surprisingly decent card <laughs> in certain formats, mostly Commander. Um, but I will say that I think this might be a kind of Commander sleeper, just like, you know, Falconer was. But even outside of Commander, I think that mod, modded dude you control have lifelink is just a good ability to come down like affects the board state the turn it comes down you know if you've been able to get like two three charged up dudes with counters or r's or whatever it is then suddenly giving them all lifelink could swing the game like massively in your favor especially if you're up against aggro or burn or something like that so i don't know this is another one i just haven't really heard much chatter about whatsoever and you know we're, we're number 10 on the list right here so i don't really expect like that much out of it but you know, the first few spots on a sleepers list are usually reserved for cards that I've heard literally no one utter a single sentence about, and maybe someone should, so I'm doing that right here. I just think this is a neat card that has multiple applications and potentially multiple formats, but at the very least, commander decks might like this, like Selesnia counters or whatever, like give it a shot. We'll move on to number nine here, which I want it to be an MDFC, you know, uh, one of the cards that has a land on the back of it, and you can either play the land or you can play the card, and it's these tend to be really, really good, and there are some that are getting a lot of attention and they tend I think that the ones that are getting the attention really deserve it but there's a couple that people haven't really talked about and I had a few here before I settled on one and uh let's let's in the suspense here number nine is pinnacle monk a weird looking card right it's five mana it's three and two wide for a two two gen monk with prowess and when an ETBs return an instant or sorcery card 
from your graveyard to your hand. Now, the other side of this is a land that comes into play tapped unless you pay three life. But if you pay three life, comes into play untapped, and you tap it for a red mana. So this is an untapped land with, you know, a sort of graveyard recovery ability on it that also has prowess, which I guess, like, might matter. Um, nobody really wants to play five mana two twos in modern. But <laughs> when you get to a five mana two two that can also just be a land in the early game, um, in like your burn deck or something like that. Like, I really don't think the card density will be too high if this does see play anywhere. I think this is just like a one of in very, very specialized decks. But I don't think anyone on the internet besides me is like really talking about this. I could be mistaken, but you know, a lot of people are focusing a lot of their attention on the better MDFCs, quote unquote, better MDFCs. There's like a blue one that changes the target of a spell or ability. There's a black one that like exiles a player's graveyard. Like there are some really good MDFCs in this set but i think that this one as far as the ones that people aren't talking about is like way high up on that list so again i wanted to spotlight it for a second here towards the beginning of this list because i'm not sure that it's like super playable at five mana right but it's also an untapped land that's like sort of a i keep wanting to call it snapcaster mage i guess it's closer to like an eternal witness in red or something like that that gets back instant and sorceries it's just not a really bad line of text especially if your deck is dependent on like a very important instant or sorcery. Like, even if you just burn, like, this could be a halfway decent card if you rip it off the top and the game went long. So, all I'm saying is I wouldn't put it past seeing, like, some extremely sparing play. But if it does see sparing play, then I think it'll surprise a lot of people. So, that's why it's on the list. Number eight keeps, like, waffling on and off the list, and I'm just not sure if I really want it here. But at the end of the day, I think that Tamiyo meets the story circle can probably be number eight, right? This is a two-mana saga. It costs one and a blue on your first chapter. It gives all your opponents, dudes, uh, minus two, minus O, until end of turn whenever they attack you or one of your planeswalkers. On chapter two, this is the interesting one. Discard any number of cards, then investigate twice for each card you discarded this way. On chapter three, you can shuffle up to three cards from your uh, graveyard into your library, which, like, I don't know, it could be cool, but chapter two is what I'm, like, really interested in here because if you discard four cards, you get eight <laughs> clues, which... Which is great. I guess if you discard five or six, yeah, you get 10 or 12. But I think in a realistic world, you'll be discarding three or four. And that's still, you know, six to eight clue tokens. There's a lot you can do with that, you know? Like, one thing you can do is Broodstar. I know it's a dumb one. <laughs> Broodstar is pretty dumb. But, like, you know, you'll have, like, a two mana 10-10 or something like that if you, if, you, if you try Broodstar. There's also um, a relatively new card that's legal and standard. Um, Dowsing Device. If you played, like, a one-drop creature... Um, and then you douse any vice on two and then story circle on three, not the story circle from Arcadian masks, <laughs> the story, the Timmy meets the story circle, um, on like turn three, then suddenly <laughs> dowsing device is going to give a creature like plus eight plus zero in haste or some ridiculous thing like that. So that could be neat, but there's tons of different things that care about artifacts coming into play or how many artifacts you have in play. And Broodstar is a dumb example of an affinity card, right? But, like, any card with affinity could go somewhat well with this, theoretically, at least. So, I don't know. Just wanted to bring this up again. I think that we're about to leave maybe one more card that I think is um, just kind of one that not enough people are talking about. Maybe it's not actually that good, but I think that it deserves, like, 90 seconds in the spotlight. So, I want to give that to them. You know, <laughs> We'll move on to, um, you know, of, 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 originally, number seven was going to be Path of Annihilation. Um, this is the four mana thing that puts two spawns into play and all of your Eldrazi have tapped out of mana of any color. So that's, it's cute. Um, also like whenever you cast a huge guy, you gain four life, but I just keep looking at this card and thinking it's weak, weaker than I think it is at the very least. So I don't know. Um, I don't think this should be number seven. Instead, I made number seven Cyclops Superconductor because I wanted like one good card that makes energy on the sleepers list because energy kind of has its own. Here's another uh, foreshadowing for <laughs> energy kind of has its own little mini category in the top 25 list that I'm planning right now. And there's a lot of really good energy stuff in the set and people are talking about them too, you know, like amped raptor and galvanic discharge and you know, the blue thing that gives you two energy and draws a card. Like, there's a lot of energy cards that are getting a lot of press right now, but superconductor is not one of them. And I actually think this card is kind of decent. This is three mana, one, a blue and a red for a two, two Cyclops wizard with prowess. And when it ETBs, you get three energy counters. When it dies, you may pay three energy. And if you do Cyclops does uh, damage equal to its power to anything. You just fling it at whatever. And that's pretty great. <laughs> actually, <laughs> 
really not bad at all. You know, we have a one drop in standard like this um, right now that kind of sees play, but that's standard and it's a one drop, whereas this is a three drop. But this also has prowess, which I guess is cool gravy. But mostly the cool thing about this is that it's a three drop that gets you three energy when it comes into play, which is cool. You know, we have a two drop right now that it's like a two, two flying for two mana and Azorius to get you three energy when it ETBs. And that thing is awesome. And people are talking about it. This is a whole extra mana to get your three energy on a body, but it's still three energy on a body. Um, it does have prowess. So like if you cast a burn spell or not a burn spell, but a pump spell on it, the opposite of a burn spell, <laughs> if you cast a pump spell on it, um, it'll get the prowess plus whatever the pump is. And then if it dies, it'll deal like lava axe at least to a target. Like that's pretty good, man. And like, if it's in your energy deck, the thing, the problem, right, is that I don't think the energy deck is going to be constructed this way, but it's self-sufficient. Like, even if you're not using energy for anything else, like whatsoever, you still bank the three energy for when it comes into play. So it basically just is a three mana two, two prowess when it dies, deal damage equal to its power to any target. It just is that. And that actually isn't too bad. Again, combined with the right burn spells, especially I keep wanting to do that the right pump spells. But one has talked about this dude. And I think that everyone's being a little myopic with the vision when it comes to the Cyclops. I'm going to work a joke in every now and again. Now, number six, as we approach the middle of the list, is the only reprint on the list. I, I really tried hard not to put reprints on the list, especially considering, like, how slippery can a reprint be? Like, everyone knows it exists. And even if it's its first time in modern, people are like, oh, this card's going to be good. Like, people are talking about him, right? But the only, <laughs> one of the only reprints I've seen in the set, like, Either A, no one's talking about, or B, when they do bring it up, it's still like kind of make fun of it, is not Basking Brood Scale. Basking Brood Scale was going to be number six, and then too many people talked about it. <laughs> That's why it's like right here in the uh, slide presentation, is because Basking Brood Scale was all day going to be number six forever, and then like five people talked about it too much, and I was like, well, I guess it's not a sleeper anymore. Also needed to take um, spawn creating stuff off this list because there's too much spawn creating stuff. We'll hit a vein of it in a second, but number six is actually Shrieking Drake. This is a reprint from Visions. The whole point of this card for its entire existence has been to, you know, uh, abuse this, this supposed downside of having to bounce one of your own guys. By the way, I love the uh, art here by Ian Miller. I also like that Ian Miller is... Uh, the love interest sort of side, like main character ish <laughs> in um, Greek wedding in my big fat Greek wedding. The guy that Tula is marrying, his name is Ion Mila. So that's a little, <laughs> I've watched Greek wedding a lot. It's actually a good movie. It's so sue me. I like it. But <laughs> anyway, Shrieking Drake, I think is um, a massive sleeper. Again, mostly when people talk about it, they, they talk about it to like make fun of it. <laughs> It's like it's the worst reaper in the set and all that stuff. But no, I actually think this has like real applications. Um, in modern, there, there's obviously combos with it. In case you didn't already know, Shrieking Drake is kind of a combo piece, has been a combo piece in Commander like forever. It'll often return itself to your hand, which is exactly what it's going to do in the combo I'm about to talk about. But it'll often return itself to your hand and you just play it again, you return it to your hand, play it again. And then you'll get all these triggers off of like a creature entering the battlefield or a blue spell being cast or like whatever it is you're abusing at, the, at that time. So just one mana to recast a creature over and over and over has been great in like Simic decks with Beast Whisperer, right? Because you cast Shrieking Drake, draw a card, cast Shrieking Drake, draw a card, cast Shrieking Drake, draw a card. And like these loops have existed with Drake forever. And now we get them in modern, which I think is actually really, really sweet. But in any case, we actually have like a combo that's available in the draft environment in the set <laughs> that I think might actually pour it over to modern, depending on what you're doing with it. We have um, Shrieking Drake, but we also have Primal Prayers, which is a new take on Oleron. You get like two energy when it comes into play and you can pay energy rather than um, pay the creature cost or the casting cost for creatures with like casting cost three or less or something like that. It's on screen right now. Really cool card. Uh, again, I love Alloran, so it's a fun take. But Guide of Souls on your screen now is also in this set. And this will give you not only a life, but an energy when a creature comes into play. So do you see the loop yet? Do you see it? If you have Guide of Souls and a Primal, uh, primal Prayers out, you cast Shrieking Drake for free with the Alloran spell, the Primal Prayers. Um, and it'll give you an energy when it comes into play off Guide of Souls and a life for that matter. So you can just use Shrieking Drake's ability to pop Shrieking Drake back to your hand, play it again for free with the energy you just got from Guide of Souls, and you do this forever, and you gain instant, infinite life, and any, you get infinite triggers off of a creature entering the battlefield, um, which is cool and might do something in modern despite the fact that it's like a three-card combo, but it's really, really easy to assemble 
and any other pieces you might want to assemble with it are, are fairly easy to get out to. So I don't know. It's not necessarily going to make the biggest splash in the world, but all I'm saying is just don't do take a creature seriously that has this ability for so cheap because there's a lot of combo setups with it. But anyway, I've talked more than enough about that. Let's move on to the vein of cards that create <laughs> spawn tokens. I think there's only a couple of them. I think I was able to whittle it down to like two when it was four or five, but Anyway, number five, right in the middle of the list is Spawn Gang Commander. Five mana, three and two red for a 2-2 Eldrazi Goblin with Devoid. When you cast the spell, create three spawn tokens. You can also pay one and a colorless and sack an Eldrazi to have Commander deal two to any target. So it's Siege Gang Commander. Um, and they, I guess technically the downside here compared to Commander is that you have to pay colorless mana to use the ability. Who cares? Who at all cares? If I tap a Soul Ring, I have an activation of this. If I tap a Soul Ring and I have other lands out, that's two activations of this in terms of the colorless mana I've made. So that is Commander Talk. I know, but I actually think this might have a tiny shot in Modern. It's got two different creature types that matter for the decks that want to play it. You know, Eldrazi and Goblin are both relevant creature types. Um, but the thing I like about this is that it is kind of the best Siege Gang commander ever printed. Now, Siege Gang made creatures that actually had power, which is the other downside compared to Siege Gang. But what Siege Gang and other creatures like it never did, because there's like four different versions of Siege Gang now, right? They keep iterating on it. But what this what, what these cards never did is create mana. This is actually five mana for three ramps. Um, on a body, too, uh, which is kind of amazing. It's also five mana for four bodies and on siege gang that's mattered before the cool thing about this is that all the bodies are colorless which might matter too so i don't know three spawns is not nothing the card kind of costs two mana a little maybe a little bit costs two mana i um, mean obviously it's really really good to like blink or anything like especially blink though <laughs> it's great to blink um, also, there are certain reanimation spells, um, setups that you might be able to generate mana off of this. That's also sweet. So just a kind of, I think, incredible magic card on a couple of levels that like I have heard zero people open their mouth and speak the name of. So that's kind of concerning. I think the card is actually not really good, but you know, C plus, and that's better than people are giving it credit for. So We'll move on to number four here, which is Emrakul's Messenger, the other spawn creating card. This I've talked about a lot and not a whole lot of other people, <laughs> but I feel like if you watch the channel, you've seen me bring this card up a bunch of times and be like, oh, I like this thing. So I'm not going to belabor the point too much, especially with how much I've talked about the last couple of cards. But M's Mess is, <laughs> it's a great name too for the card. M's Mess is two mana, one and a blue for two, one Eldrazi Fairy Rogue with Devoid and Flying. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, you make a zero one spawn token. So also she looks fabulous. She looks incredible. Um, good job, David Alvarez, especially on the eyes. <laughs> And the smile here, just a really, just altogether wonderful, wonderful art for this card. But still, this is, um, whenever you draw extra cards, make ramp. Probably the two best things you can do in a game of magic is draw and get fast mana. Those are the two, may, may, maybe in that order, but not necessarily, right? Fast mana might be even better than drawing cards, but you want more looks and you want to go faster than your opponent in terms of mana production. This card does one of those things, but it rewards the other, right? Um, and just casting chart of course, brainstorm, whatever, or like having a creature that comes into play, draws you a card or triggers when it attacks and draws you a card. There's so many ways to draw cards in a game of magic. We've already seen a few of these draw your second card each turn things like go on to some modicum of success. But this one is great, especially considering it kind of fuels itself, right? Because what do you need to cast card draw spells? What do you need to be able to draw more cards. You need mana to do that, right? So if you draw your second card in a turn, this kind of makes a mana for you so that you're more likely to draw an extra card next turn. And again, it fuels itself. Just so many cool things about this. I know we're in a Bowmasters format. Nothing with one toughness is safe, but I also kind of don't care. This is like worthy enough to at least try out. I just, draw extra cards, get ramp. Literally nothing wrong with that whatsoever. <laughs> We'll move into our top three here already. How do we manage that? Collective resistance is just two mana. One and a green for an instant with escalate for a green. You can pay this cost for each mode you choose beyond the first. Choose one or more. Destroy an artifact. Destroy an enchantment. Or a creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So a one-off sort of heroic intervention for one guy. And there are better protection spells than this. Yes, but none of them are like... This versatile, modal, you know, if you pay three, four mana for this, you can get 
um, multiple modes on it, which sounds like a lot in modern, and it is a little bit, but I think there are going to be plenty of games where you're like, okay, counter that removal spell and destroy your enchantment, and I win the game. Like, this could easily blow somebody out at instant speed for three mana. And even at two mana, it is serviceable and potentially main deckable if you do have creatures that you're trying to, you know, protect for whatever reason, like in a Bogle's build or something. Yeah, you're looking for mostly one mana effects that do this, but this also has the ability to, you know, just blow them out depending on, like, Amulet, you know? If you're if you're Bogle's and you're up against Amulet, this can blow up Amulet on turn two, but also, like, give your creatures protection. I just, I really think this is a good card. And this is another one that, like, no one's talked about. I think that sometimes we see stuff like this, we just go, oh, we just gotta pick your poison. Or whatever, you know? Um, and this won't see any play because of that. But again, I think this is one of those sort of not as narrow as it looks, right? It's probably just going to go in a couple of different kinds of decks. So it's narrow in that way. But as far as the actual scope of playability on the card, it does so many things and is, you know, again, main deckable for something that would normally be sideboardable. So I don't know. Really, really cool card. I hate that we don't get it in standard. It would be a busted piece in standard, I think. But, <laughs> you know, I hope I'm not coming at these things with standard brain. There might be better things to do than this, but... Ultimately, I think that this is an amazing spread of options to have all on the same card. But we'll move on to number two. Number two, Power Balance. Um, another card that people are saying the name of, but not taking seriously enough uh, at all. This is two red mana for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may reveal the top card of your library. If you do, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost if the two spells have the same mana value. Now... I think for people who have never seen Counterbalance, first of all, this is going to look bad. But even to people who have seen Counterbalance, it's going to look like a worse Counterbalance. It might be. But I think that even if you're a worse Counterbalance, you can still be a really good Magic Guard. You guys remember how good Counterbalance was? Mostly because of Divining Top. Um, we may not have Divining Top legal to play in Modern <laughs> right now. But at the same time, I think there are plenty of ways. Like the Miracles deck is still a thing people are trying to make happen every now and again. There are ways to... Um, there are ways to ensure that you know what the top card of your library is going to be, even at instant speed when your opponent you know, puts a spell on the stack. So with that in mind, I think this is actually very abusable. Um, also note that this can still be used as a counterbalance if you have a counter spell on top of your library. So many people, myself included during previous season, were like, oh, it just cast burn spells. It doesn't do that. It doesn't just cast burn spells. It casts counter spells, if that's what happens to be on top of your library. But it also casts creatures. <laughs> it casts enchantments. It's just any card. It's just any card off the top of your library. And that's pretty busted <laughs> like in a lot of ways. Like counterbalance would just reveal the top card. And if it has the same mana value, then counter the thing they cast, which is busted. Don't get me wrong, but counterbalance didn't play cards off the top of your library. It didn't actually create real mean card advantage. And this does. So that's okay. You know, <laughs> whatever <laughs> I just think there's a lot about this card to like really praise and everyone's just kind of stuck on how counterbalance was better and they move on after that sentence and it's like yeah but you have to analyze the card beyond that statement and yeah it can cast lightning bolts it can cast lightning strikes it can cast skull cracks it can cast all kinds of stuff really easily because like the average mana cost of a card in modern is two so all you gotta <laughs> you can even cast other power balances and just start going off from there and like actually getting real card advantage if your opponent cast a spell, you get to cast two. So all I'm saying at the end of the day is that you really have to keep a piece like this in mind. You know, you can't just say, well, the card that it's, it's referencing was better. So I'm just going to put it down and move on to the next card. No, yeah, well, how, how much worse is it than the last card? And is it even worse than the last card that was just like it? So I don't know. I actually have some real hopes for this card. I think that it's busted and no one else appears to think that. So... Power balance. May it be the Arclight Phoenix of this video. But number one, <laughs> number one can't be obvious at all. You know, none of these cards can be obvious. It's, a, it's an underrated list. It's a sleeper's list, you know. But at the same time, uh, number one can't be a thing like power balance that's like rare and like people are talking about it, but mostly just a bag on it. It has to be cards that, that literally no one's talking about. I also wanted an Eldrazi on the list somewhere. This is where that foreshadowing from earlier comes in. I wanted Eldrazi, so... I actually picked two. I cheated a little bit because they're almost the same card. We got Warped Tusker as well as Drown Yard Lurker. I do think Lurker is the better card, but again, they're very similar. Tusker is a 7-mana 6-8 Eldrazi Boar Beast with Reach. Whenever you cast or cycle it, you get a spawn token. You can cycle it for two and a green. 
Now, keep that in mind. A 7 mana 6 8 reach. Cycle green mana. Drown Yard Lurker is a 7 mana 7 7 vigilance. Whenever you cast or cycle it, you get a spawn token cycle for 3 mana. The mana is blue instead of green this time. So, I think these cards are bonkers. And no one has said a word about these. Um, remember earlier when I said drawing cards and ramping is the best thing, like two things you can do in a game of magic? This card, th these do both. Get you somebody who can do both. Poor Canolis does. Ask Drown Yard Lurker and Warp Tusker, and uh, they answer their own question. Honestly, They're like why, why not? <laughs> why not both ramp and draw at the same time at instant speed? By the way, but if that's all these cards did, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't think it was like a huge deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? But these are also both seven mana, Eldrazi. Like they're you know, which is kind of gross. <laughs> so they're colorless. You know, this is a colorless card. This card is colorless. I know that there's green mana to cycle it, but this card is colorless. It costs colorless mana to cast, and it costs seven mana. Do you know what that means? That means that it can go up under an Ugin's Labyrinth on turn one of the game, and if it goes up under an Ugin's Labyrinth, suddenly Ugin's Labyrinth taps for two mana. <laughs> Just pretty nasty. You can also, um, if you're really desperate for a card... Use the Ugin's Labyrinth to put your Lurker back into your hand and then cycle it away, get a spawn token, get a card, right? So that's a neat little trick. Um, also, these are common. If that's worth anything to you, if Popper playability is worth anything to you, these are common. Um, and they may go in like Eldrazi or Colorless decks there, or they may just go as like a neat utility piece that ramps and puts a body on the table and draws at instant speed. You know, I imagine if there was, an, if there was a card, I don't know if it would see play in Modern, <laughs> but if there was a card that said, you know, three mana, flash, zero, one, sack for a mana, and draw a card when it ETBs, that would be pretty playable in multiple formats. And here we get two common versions of that card that are just better than that card because they they help with Ugin's Labyrinth. They're seven sevens in the late game, you know, like a six eight, you know, on reach on one side, seven seven vigilance on this side. So I just think that these are phenomenal magic cards and like zero people have opened their mouth to speak them. So um, here I am doing the Lord's work. I really think that these have multiple and just beyond the like Ugin's Labyrinth thing that I was talking about. These have multiple real applications just because they're seven mana colorless creatures in modern. Um, but beyond that, again, I think just the raw power of instant speed, draw a card, get a body that ramps is pretty nasty and people are overlooking these like all day every day so easily my number one pick for sleeperiest highest impact cards in the set that no one's talking about i think it's kind of not close to be honest but them is the sleepers i guess everybody um this <laughs> this felt a little different than normal and i apologize for that i apologize for spilling coffee on my laptop i've already apologized profusely to my wife um and i feel pretty bad about it myself so well you know i we'll see we'll get it all we'll get it all sorted <laughs> soon enough but i had fun today i hope you did too i'm looking at all them sleepers for modern horizons 3 which is probably an even better set than like the first two modern horizons which is really saying something that in mind we're gonna have our top 25 coming out like really really soon the next couple of days it might look like this <laughs> we'll see maybe i can like stand back and hold the microphone while standing up and having the camera at a different angle and like does this work is this like a normal SBMTG video i'm not too sure but either way that's all I've got for this one. I love you all very much. Do the YouTube stuff on your way out. And of course, go to the comments section and let me know what your sleepers for the set are. And of course, what you feel about, about any of my picks. Um, are they bad? They're probably bad. <laughs> I'm also going to put a video out soon where I'm going to review um, all of the sleepers from sets that are about to rotate in standard. And you guys have been asking me for that. So look forward to that too. Sub to the sandwich if you want any of that content that I've rambled on about in the last three minutes. And of course, like the video on your way out too. Join the Patreon dollar a month to vote on content around here, including rotation proof decks in the next month or two. And once Bloomboro hits, actual new rotation Bloomboro decks, you'll get to vote on those. So a buck a month is all I ask. I feel like I'm worth it. I do a lot of work around here. But anyway, that's all I've really got. I am Dev from The Place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind.